Hey, Pete. Hey, man. If the moon were made of cheese, would you eat it? This was a children's store that I've forgotten. My kids aren't as young as yours. It's a simple question. Okay. Uh, no. I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Martin. You're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. I got Andrew. You I did. got Andrew to laugh he's with still, our with our Saturday Night Live Harry Carey, uh, Jeff Goldblum reference there. And I, it was totally whoosh above my head <laughs> as, as are many things. So we're talking about the moon today here because we have a speak pipe. And we yes. haven't done one of these all week, but we have some on deck. Absolutely. And we just want to say at the end of the episode, I'm very excited to hear about this, but I'm also very excited that we will be uh, doing a special offer, a giveaway. That I don't think we've have we ever done a giveaway of some swag we've not. or some swag, as they now, like to say. We're not giving it, giving it away. We're asking something in return. Well, but it's well, but not not much. But check out at the I mean, end of the episode. Un- we're asking a little, but we're giving an opportunity a lot. for something very, very much yeah, yeah. Free. at the end of the episode. Yeah, yeah. Don't let us forget it. Uh, so we have a speak pipe today about okay. space from Alex, who I think might be in space himself. Let's check it out. <laughs> Adam. Peter, as lives. Hey. So, um, I wanted y'all to talk about um, how to use space effectively. I feel like space punctuates your lines, your phrases, your solos in general. And the solos that know how to use space best create the most memorable solos. So, yeah, talk about space. It's the place, man. All right, Alex. He's uh, <laughs> Alex has been in space, I think, before. I think so. First of all, I just want to say a big shout-out to the cannabis industry <laughs> for sponsoring that. I mean, uh, they're really helping our podcast to keep going, honestly. <laughs> okay. Um, there you go. Space is the place. You know what, though? As often with these kinds of conversations <laughs> that you might find yourself in, this is a pretty decent topic to talk about. It's very good. It's something I mean, we haven't actually addressed specifically, but it is super, super important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you think about space when you improvise, just generally? You know, this is actually one of the things, I know I'm always talking about, like, oh, I'm so great, I don't think about anything. Yeah. <laughs> I just play. Yeah, yeah. But and, and I do try to not actually, I mean, I try to be unconscious or subconscious or something while I'm playing. I'm yeah. like, dang, I've been doing this long enough, I should be able to. But space, like, this is one of those things that I do think about I, I I've, I've kind of gotten the habit of thinking about because I've I've never heard a recording or, or seen a video of me playing live or even on record even recently and definitely when I was younger when I was like wow I left too much space me neither <laughs> man is that the craziest really? I don't think I've ever met anyone that's ever said that before I don't haven't either everybody yeah. was like why am I playing so much yeah 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 so I mean it's like the whole thing of like editing making something simpler you know and then I think also as you become more accomplished at playing things that are interesting and intriguing and telling a story in a in a clear way that space helps even more when you don't have much to say it doesn't matter as much because you know the thing about space and I, i'm really interested to hear how you because i don't know that we've talked just about this but we've thrown it in but the thing that comes to mind first so many different angles for this but but the thing that comes to mind first in improvisation the use of space what it does is draws attention to what you just played yep not even so much what you're about to play. This music being so much in the moment that we're normally like, you know, time is moving along for our listener there. Time is moving at an interesting space and pace, I would have to say. But if you play something and then leave the right amount of space, you can kind of heighten the resonance of what you just played. Mm. So, it, it, and I mean, I always think of like the idea of like, ba 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 bum ba 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 bum yeah, yeah. right? The yeah. iconic Beethoven Fifth Symphony. How's that for a jazz musician making the biggest pop <laughs> classical reference that you could? But I mean, what, you know, there's different ways that conductors read that piece. But I always like it when there's a, that the correct amount of space. And I don't know what that amount is. Maybe what I just sang was the right, right amount. But if you move too quickly to the next part, you don't get to have that like the weight of what just happened. Because later on, it's going to go into the pop 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 pop. There's already a less space later on. So it's like you gotta you gotta dwell in that space for that right amount of time. And I think a lot of that's instinct. But when you kind of thinking about it in terms of something that you just improvised, 
you do want to give the proper amount of space, which is usually more than you think you're going to after you played something really cool. Yeah. So that the listener can kind of be like, wow. Just like in a speech, if somebody says something, you're building up and then you drop that bomb. Mm-hmm. Ah, see, I left that space there. Pregnant pause. Pregnant pause, yeah. Pregnant pause is when you don't really drop a bomb and you just leave space, right? Yeah. So I think I totally agree with that. And thinking about this can be a strategy for not just like a solo, but an entire set of how you use space and maybe even an entire gig of how you use space. A whole lifetime. A whole lifetime of how you (laughs) use space. But there's there's two ways to think about this because we're talking about negative space here, but we could also talk about the positive space and how much negative space to leave is the duration of that space and the, um, the uh, uh, number of times you have that space. So then we're talking about shorter phrases of what we're actually playing of the positive space. Right. Right. I implore all the, all the musicians who are listening to this to go check out any single Keith Jarrett solo Mm. and recognize how short of phrases Keith plays yes quite often yeah I think of Keith as not a busy player but playing you know for some reason long languid lines right which yeah. he does occasionally but he plays so many short phrases yeah I mean it's really really like a succession of brilliant beautiful quickly turning short phrases and then short short amounts of space and then sometimes long amounts of space sometimes a big long phrase and it you know usually can develop but in general when you hear a great soloist like Keith Jarrett, I'm also thinking of like Miles played a lot more shorter phrases than you think he did. Yes. We all have this envision of just Miles holding these long notes or playing what, but I mean, really just think about just that like, these are short phrases right. compared to like instinctually, I want to start just running my, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, it changes the, the, you know, what, how impactful a smaller amount of space is after a short phrase. Yes. You know, and and there's no right or wrong answer to this, but it is something to kind of think about and listen to in these great recordings and then think about how you're going to apply it to your playing. Because if you play a succession, like maybe you were getting to this with the Keith Jarrett thing of like a succession of short phrases. With short spaces. With short spaces can actually feel like very impactful yes. and feel like big spaces. And, and and the whole thing is you want it to be appropriate for what's being played. Same thing with like miles, but then, you know, with the instruments, how space is used is very different. Um, when a trumpet plays a note, like one note and holds it and then kind of comes with a diminuendo or whatever, things that we can't necessarily control at the piano, that gives the feeling of space, depending on what's happening around it. It's not just a lack of music being played. Yeah. Sometimes something is being held, but that's still creating space. So that's why it's not binary, like either space or none. Well, I was going to say there's a third t- dimension of this. Like a drummer could be playing time, but leaving space. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pianists, we have a bunch of ways to leave space while still be playing. Right. I could tie my left hand behind my back and it feels a lot more spacious yes. as what I'm playing. Even or, if you didn't leave any actual pa- um, exactly. break in the, in the music. But but the, the sonority of the music is, yeah. has a lot more space. Uh, and to the same effect, I could play insanely busy with both hands yeah. and create all this tension and like mass inside yeah. the space. You know? Or think so. about if we're, you know, improvising in kind of a standard way, sort of comping with our left hand, maybe with the rhythm section, you know, rootless type of, you know, just typical things. And we're we're playing. If all of a sudden we stop for one measure or even say four measures would be very dramatic mm. with our improvising lines, but continue, continue to play comping with our left hand. Mm. I mean, like non-stop playing in the same way it's going to feel like a lot of space because the listeners focus in on those melodic lines yeah, yeah. so the comping kind of continues it's almost like the inverse of what you know about put your hand behind the back and just have the line you know it'll maybe draw attention there but it's going to seem spacious from a melodic standpoint well, this is from the, the textural standpoint it's still going to be thick and that's the that's where the fun is we can draw attention you know i always think whenever i'm playing with a, a bass player and we're doing some kind of ostinato tune like yeah something like that yeah like i'll take breaks in my soul that it go just play the line with the bass player to yep. draw attention to that compositionally. I want to like, let's refocus on, on the core of this, this feeling right now. You know what I mean? Yep. All this thing can, all these things can be these tools you can use to create space. But then let's get back to your original point, which is how much space do we leave? Yeah. You know, what's the duration of the space and how much is too much? I mean, that's a very easy, I can answer that with one word. We got number one, Listen. Listen. That's so true. (laughs) And now in this case, I would say the listening is, when we're improvising, is listen to the moment. 
and maybe this even applies this is an interesting thing because we're always trying to we love classical music but we both always have kind of a a, a, a side-handed approach to criticizing by saying yeah that's all everything is planned the fingering everything but maybe this is for classical music too if you're a conductor and you you do ba -ba -ba -bum, maybe you don't have a total plan as to when you start that next phrase maybe it's the moment like what is the moment what is the moment what is that day that audience that barometric pressure all those different kinds of things what is it like so are you opening up to listen and wait to move on or wait to leave the amount of space that the moment needs. And I know it's just sounding mystical and esoteric, but it, it, it really is just a matter of like play what you hear and our whole concept of you'll hear it. Yeah, there's no wrong choices if you're doing that. That's right. I would, had a gig Tuesday. There's inferior choices, but not wrong. <laughs> yeah, no. And I had a, gig, a trio gig Tuesday, and there's a moment that sticks out in my mind because it was something I wouldn't typically do, but it just felt so right. We were, I was uh, during the piano solo, and we're building, and, and Montez, who's usually very, not sparse, but he's very supportive, yeah. he's starting to play more and more as yeah. like we're climaxing and, and about to go to a new chorus right and which would normally be a time where maybe i pull out a herbie like <laughs> you know what I mean? right and i just like let i let off right just let him have it right like right this, and he did some really slick stuff i've heard you do this with actually with hutch where it's like things are it's, it's a moment where instinctually you're like oh i should fill this space because we're because space the, is the place <laughs> sometimes the right thing to do is just like I yeah. mean, that's why we're playing with other people. It's like, let them have that space I know, and feel I know. that, you know? Yeah. I mean? Well, this is great. I mean, there's so many different levels. We're talking about within just the piano and then within the ensemble. And then there's there's so many. And then the cool thing with that is like, yeah, let somebody else, let the moment dictate. Let's do some collective listening to what, what instrument needs to be played. Because then when you get to that ultimate level of space of actual silence, yeah. because space is not the same as silence. No. But there is silence, which is, I would say, the ultimate, especially the larger the ensemble you have, because it's so rare that nothing is going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about a, a full orchestra, it doesn't matter what the style or whatever, when is there total silence? In between movements, before it starts, at the end, unless it's one of these wacky pieces that's silent, you know, it's just a rest. Yeah. But I mean, when that's the ultimate drama, is nothing going on. Yeah. People think it's like 2D and everybody playing. The ultimate is nothing, because there's going to be times when there's a little bit of loud, medium, whatever, but it's totally off yeah. when it's, you know, it's something else that's is just, underutilized by in, like intermediate musicians. Yeah. I feel like they don't use enough silence. And when we play solo piano, we can totally control that because we're the whole orchestra. Like we can go yeah. to total silence. But when a trio does it or a quintet or whatever, that's a cool thing too. Oh, really, and the audience really loves that. Like yeah. if you think about the dramatic points, like when something ends and we do our thing at the end and then you let it fade away, what's the most dramatic point? Yeah. When everybody releases that. And then yeah. before the before the wild applause, the inevitable wild applause, or the confused, awkward. Yeah, if you're playing this weekend and you're, you're putting together some arrangements or a set list, like put in some silence, some big yeah. moments of silence for your audience. It's, you're gonna right. notice some uh, drama. Yeah, some drama. Well, this is cool. Thank you. Now, who was that? I didn't catch the name of. Uh, it was Alex of our inebriated or I assume or in Stone Colorado. <laughs> uh, no, thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, thanks, Alex. it's it's That's actually very rare that we get a question that's on such an interesting subject that we could go on for four or five uh, episodes, but we won't because that's not how we roll. And we have something exciting, we well, promise. We have a very special uh, free offer today. Free? Like totally free? Well, no, it's going to require some work on your part. Yeah, but no money. No money. Money. No, right, yeah. right. Um, yeah, so what, what, what are we going to ask? First of all, well, let's talk about what we're offering. Well, if you're on YouTube here, you can see this beautiful orange, you'll hear it sticker with... Did you call it orange? Orange. <laughs> orange. Orange. Uh, also known as orange. 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 With our with our exclusive logo, yeah. custom logo, exclusive sticker. Our ugly mugs on there. Limited edition. Um, never been offered anywhere for money or otherwise. Yeah. Outside of a... I mean, often asked for, rarely <laughs> accepted or given out. But yeah, it's a nice little... What would you call this? Like a... Uh, oh, we're not supposed to say the size because it could be different, but it's going to be something suitable for your laptop, for your car, yep. for anything. But it's a you'll hear it sticker. Yeah, just like we have. And we want to give that to you for free. Yeah. And it's probably going to only be if you're in the U.S. We apologize at this time. We're not authorized due to um, a court order it's to an ship out. EU <laughs> shipping costs. Yeah. Uh, outside the U.S. But for now, our U.S. friends, uh, we want to send you one of these. So what do they have to do? And this is going to be to the first. How many people? How many do we have? Let's say 20. 20 okay we've got 20 for now so to the first 20 people that leave us a rating or review on itunes google play or wherever or apple podcast wherever you are enjoying this um give us a subscribe on youtube however you want to do it yeah now how are we going to know they did that well we're going to go on the honor system aren't we we are going to go on the honor system yeah no <laughs> we're we going get, on the we honor. get the ratings and reviews so if yeah you, but we're not going to go check if it was this right 
No, we're okay. not. But the first twenty people that leave, let's. How about how about a code word? How about space? If you use space in the review, in your review, or seven will... stars. How about seven stars? I like that even well, better. They all are okay. all seven stars. So use space in you your space review. Space in your review. A keyword space. Yep. And then we'll send you a sticker. We will send you a sticker. And then the the way we're gonna know. As you can tell, this is we put this plan together for weeks. This is totally rehearsed. No, this is we're literally making it up as we go. But we're gonna know that you have done that by you're gonna go to openstudionetwork.com mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. slash sticker. Mm. Is that correct? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. They're gonna go to you'll hear it.com slash, slash sticker. sticker. Yeah. You'll hear it.com. We haven't been talking about that enough, but a lot of people know it, but some new listeners may not. That's our blog. That's all things podcast. It's, it's of course, run by Open Studio, but this is like all free content there, things that maybe of interest to you, some of our episodes and, and things that tie into the episode. But you're going to want to go to youllhearit.com forward slash sticker mm. after you leave your rating review and the first 20 people that do that. And look, the rating or review does not need to be seven stars. We prefer that. It doesn't even need to be five stars. If you if you want to give us one star, we want that to be honest. We're not buying your love with the sticker, this beautiful sticker that you will receive. But, you know, spe- you know, give the rating review for you, whatever, you, whatever you're feeling. But then go to youllhearit.com slash sticker and you'll put your address in and we will send you one of these stickers if you're one of the first 20 people. If this goes well, we'll, we'll maybe keep it up. I love it. Okay. All right. Anything else we need to do? Until uh-huh. so, next time. You'll hear it.